Okay, I guess you can start. Uh, we will uh, look at the helium atom today. Uh, the we will first look at the effect of the electron-electron interaction because now we have two electrons in the helium atom. Uh, so we are going to uh, study that in first order perturbation theory, but then we'll see that we can do somewhat better uh, because if you use the variational method, you get a more uh, accurate uh, result. Uh, okay, so uh, <coughs> the helium atom is made up of uh, two protons, basically, and two electrons. Uh, and we have the uh, kinetic energy part minus h bar squared over 2m. And there will be del 1 squared plus del 2 squared. So this is the kinetic energy part. And then we have the potential uh, energy part. So minus, okay, so the uh, proton, the nucleus has two charges, two uh, E charges. So we are going to get the 2E squared over 4 pi epsilon 0 r1 for the first electron minus 2 e squared over 4 pi epsilon 0 uh, r2 okay uh, for the second electron now this piece we know the solution to okay so if our, this is our hamiltonian this piece here is just two single particle Hamiltonians added together. So we'll treat this as our unperturbed Hamiltonian because you know the solution to it. And then <coughs> there's the electron-electron interaction, which is E squared or 4 pi epsilon 0, 1 over R1 minus R2 magnitude. Okay, and this we'll treat as our H1, okay? Uh, so the wave functions and the energies associated with uh, the hydrogen uh, solution are valid for this case or also. Uh, let's just look at the energetics. Uh, the <coughs> energy uh, of the, okay, so let, let me write the hydrogen uh, energies, okay, so for the H atom, uh, let me just put these things down because, okay, I can't remember and I have to refer to them several times during this course. Okay, so <coughs> the, uh, this is E squared uh, M, let me write it in a somewhat different way. Uh, <clears throat> so that we can keep track of what's going on. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so I can write this as <clears throat> minus m over 2 h bar squared uh, e squared over 4 pi epsilon 0 squared than 1 over n squared. It turns out you can also write this as uh, minus h bar squared or 2m, okay, uh, <coughs> times 1 over a squared. So this blatantly has units of energy and a 1 over n squared, where this a is the Bohr radius and you can figure out what that is from over there, but let me just put it down. 4 pi epsilon 0 h bar squared divided by m e squared. Okay, so this part of the board will be a table of okay, certain relations that we need. 
Okay, so now uh, if you look at this uh, energy uh, states and the uh, Hamiltonian for just one electron, you see the difference, basic difference, going from hydrogen to helium for a single electron uh, part of the wave function is to notice that this E squared <coughs> has become 2E squared. Okay, so uh, I had originally E squared here, now I have 2E squared, and that's the only place where E enters. So that means I'm going to get a 2 here, okay, in the uh, energetics of helium. So the helium. Uh, Okay, helium, single particle, okay, energy. So uh, let me just call it E, uh, I don't know, E1 or something. E1 is bad notation. Okay, so uh, what I called E helium 1 or something. Okay, so that's going to be <coughs> basically that same thing, uh, which I'm going to call E1. So anything that I write as E some subscript is going to belong to hydrogen. And I'm going to get a factor of two uh, next to E squared. So it's going to be uh, four E1, okay? Uh, so for two electrons, It's just going to be the sum of those two things. So for two electrons, this is going to be E uh, helium, okay, to zero order. Okay, so I'm looking at the ground state, basically. This is going to be eight times E1 because I have two electrons, right? So each electron is in a well four times deeper than uh, a, the hydrogen atom, and then I have that. Okay, so this is going to be uh, minus eight times 13.6 electron volts, which gives you something like uh, 109 electron volts. Okay, but you have to contrast this with the experimental value, okay, uh, which is, 79 electron volts. Okay, so that's the binding energy for the single electron in helium. All right, so <laughs> you see that, obviously this is minus, uh, you see that the, the electron-electron interaction brings in a lot of positive uh, content. Okay, and uh, then uh, that is going to uh, raise this a little bit, okay, well, hopefully quite a bit. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, try to find out what that is. Okay, so the first order change in the, so E helium first order change is going to be equal to uh, the expectation value uh, in the for the ground state wave function of this quantity e squared or four pi epsilon zero r one minus r two okay and one zero zero all right so. Uh, you see, I have a vector uh, uh, a vector uh, term there, uh, so that can, in general, cause uh, complications. But uh, for this particular case, when the when you are looking at the ground state energy, since everything is spherically symmetric, that uh, okay simplifies things a lot. So the one zero zero. Uh, function is, okay, uh, so psi one zero zero is R one zero Y zero zero. Uh, 
Okay, so this thing is just uh, 1 over square root of 4 pi. And this one is not so bad. It's uh, e to the minus r over a, but there's a normalization constant in front, which is 2 a to the minus 3 over 2. Okay, so that's our uh, function. All right, uh, so let's just write this down and see how bad it is. Uh, so we are going to get two factors of this. So it's going to be 4, uh, a to the minus 3. Uh, and then I'm going to get a factor of 1 over 4 pi from the angular uh, dependence. And now I have to be careful because there are two wave functions. Okay, so this is just for one wave function. But there are two wave functions, right? So uh, I have two electrons. They are both in one zero zero state. So I really should write this as, okay, both electrons are in the one zero zero state. Yes. Hojan, should we write uh, here uh, uh, as should we consider electrons as identical particles and write their wave, uh, wave function in that form? Yes. Okay. So we have to. <laughs> right, uh, the, since they are in the ground state, uh, we have no choice but to use the symmetric uh, wave function, okay? So we cannot anti-symmetrize it, so it's just going to be a product. Uh, all right, now I have to be careful uh, because this A that I am putting in uh, is not the uh, same A uh, that uh, I have for the uh, helium atom. So uh, let, let me just perhaps go back to my table over here and let's just uh, uh, look at the case uh, when, okay, uh, so uh, when uh, the charge goes from E to uh, Z, uh, what uh, happens, uh, okay, in fact, when the interaction goes from E squared to Z E squared, okay, what happens to uh, many of these things? E n, as we discussed, uh, E n uh, goes to Z squared times E n, okay? Uh, and the uh, Bohr radius, a, you see, goes to uh, A or Z, okay, because I'm going to get a Z over here, which is uh, going to drop that by that. So the, uh, the uh, when, I, when I say A here, uh, it really corresponds to the A for the helium atom and not the hydrogen atom. Okay, uh, so let's go on. So I'm going to have, uh, uh, let's see, where do I get the four? Okay, so the, I'm just squaring this, right? Uh, and I'm going to have two of these things. Uh, so I'm going to also get a square of that. Okay, and then two integrals because I have d cube r1 and d cube r2, okay, for the two wave functions. And I have the magnitude squares of the wave function, so it's going to be e to the minus 2r1 or a, e to the minus 2r2 or a, okay? And finally, the term for which I want to find the average, so e squared or uh, 4 pi epsilon 0 r1 minus r2, all right? Okay, so I have these two vectors and I have to evaluate this integral. You see there's no angular uh, dependence any place, so I can choose my axes any way I like, okay? I can choose my axes in any directions I like and what I'm going to do to make my life simpler, this is something you always do. 
okay, whenever you have a spherically symmetric problem, okay, there's no special direction in space here. R1 and R1, R2 are vectors, but they are being integrated over all space. So I choose one of these vectors to be in the z direction. Okay, so this R1 vector I'll choose in the z direction and the uh, R2 is going to be something else. Okay. <clears throat> Now, if, if I had, for example, some spherical harmonics here which uh, brought in angles, I wouldn't be able to do that, right? Because then there's a well-defined z direction and R1 and R2, they both have, would have to be arbitrary. Okay, so uh, let's just move on. So this says that A to the minus 6, okay? Uh, divided by pi squared. Okay, uh, I'll do the R2 integral first because I'm putting that around. So let me put the QR1 here. And I'll have integrals for R squared, R2 squared dr, that's the radial integral, d theta 2. Theta 2 is the angle R2 makes with the z-axis, okay, and uh, sine theta 2, d phi 2, okay, and phi 2 is this angle that R2 makes with the x-axis, okay. So, uh, and let's go on. Uh, there's an e to the minus 2 r1 over a, e to the minus 2 r2 over a, e squared divided by 4 pi epsilon 0. Now I have this r1 minus r2 squared. So that's going to be square root of r1 squared plus r2 squared minus 2 r1 dot r2, so for that I'm going to put r1 r2 cosine theta 2. Okay, so uh, now what I do is, uh, okay, first of all there's no phi 2 any place, so this phi 2 integral just gives me a factor of 2 pi. And I have a cosine theta 2 there and a uh, d phi 2 sine theta there. So I can uh, just make a change of variables. And I say, okay, this, let me just take this uh, 2 r1 r2 cosine theta 2 to be, uh, maybe I'll take the whole thing. Okay, so I'll take this whole thing in the square root as some new variable u uh, so that uh, du is going to be minus 2 r1 r2 sine theta 2 d theta 2 which is okay relevant to what I have over there okay so let's hmm? Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Very good. <coughs> All right. So we now have this thing is equal to a to the minus 6 over pi squared. And then there's this d cube r1 integral. Uh, I might as well put the exponential here also, e to the minus 2 r1 over a. All right. And <coughs> then I have, okay, this object here uh, is going to be equal to du over 2 r1 r2, right? And then I have an r2 squared. All 
all right? So this is dr2, dr2, and e to the minus 2r2 over a, then just this thing, uh, e squared over 4 pi epsilon 0 uh, square root of u. Okay, so the u integral is now easy. It's going to give me a to the minus 6 over pi squared. Okay, d cube r1, e to the minus 2 r1 over a. Okay, one factor of r2 cancels. So I have a 1 over 2, which, okay, let me just pull that out. <coughs> and Okay, the dr2 integral is still there, along with the exponential, e to the minus 2r2 over a. And I end up with e squared over 4 pi epsilon 0. Okay, <coughs> square root of u. Okay, let, let, let me just, okay, so it's square I don't know how slowly I have to do this, but let me just skip it one step. So it's going to be square root of u over 2. Uh, square root of u is going to be r1 squared plus r2 squared uh, minus uh, 2 r1 r2 cosine theta. Okay, so cosine theta has to be evaluated at the proper limits. So the integral for theta goes from 0 to pi over 2, no, 0 to pi. All right, so I have something like that. Okay. So we, we forgot 2 pi coming from pi to integral. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you. So let's put that here. Uh, yes, there's an R1 term, thank you. Let's put that over here. Okay, uh, so, some cancellations. And I still have lots of terms. Okay, so let's see what we get. At some point, you'll see that the integral is doable. At that point, I'm going to stop. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so e, e squared over 4 pi epsilon 0. And then uh, there's a uh, 1 over pi and also a factor of 2, so 1 over 2 pi. All right, uh, and the integral uh, d cube r2 or r2 and the uh, d cube r1 is, well, d r1 is still there uh, with a factor of r1, right? Uh, no, r2, I mean. Uh, okay. And the exponential. These are our, our ones, yes. Well, why am I doing this wrong way around? R1, R1, R2, R2, right? And yeah, I forgot to put R2 here, right? Uh, okay, 2R2 over A. And then I'm going to get, okay, for pi, I'm going to get minus one. So it's going to come in with a plus sign. So I'll get uh, square root of r1 squared plus r2 squared plus 2 r1 r2 minus 
Same thing with the minus sign, R1 squared plus R2 squared minus uh, 2R1, R2. Okay, so this is just square root of a square, so this is uh, R1 plus R2. This one is, you have to be a little more careful because this is the square root of a square, so effectively it can be negative. Okay, R1 minus R2 can be negative, so it's actually absolute value of R1 minus R2. So, uh, I have two possibilities. This thing here is equal to what? If R1 is greater than R2, okay, uh, for R1 greater than R2, this is positive, so uh, I'm just going to get 2R2. Okay, but for R1 less than R2, I'm then going to change signs, I'll get an R2 minus R1, so R2 will cancel and I get 2R1. Okay, so it turns out I have to evaluate this integral carefully. Okay, uh, it has some value up to a certain point, then something else after that. Okay, so let's write that down. So it's going to be e squared over 4 pi epsilon 0, 1 over 2 pi. Then I have here, okay, uh, I forgot to write the e to the minus 2r1 over a here. Let's also start perhaps uh, putting these things down. This is going to be uh, just 1r1 dr1 uh, e to the minus 2r1 over a. And then I have this sine theta1 d theta1 and d phi1. Okay. Uh, all right. But, okay, because of the way this is constructed, the, there's no uh, angular integration associated with R1. Everything is spherically symmetric. This is just going to be uh, a factor 4 pi. All right, but now I have this nasty second part. For R, R2 less than R1, which is the initial case, so from 0 to R1, I'm going to get <coughs> R2, okay, e R2, R2, e to the minus R2 over A, okay, times, okay, so it's for this case, 2R2, okay, plus rest of the integral, R1 to infinity. So again, the R2, R2, but now, okay, I have e to the minus R2 over A times 2R1. Okay, so two different types of integrals, okay, which do not extend to uh, both to zero and infinity, so it, there will be lots of uh, terms at the boundaries, and it's going to make uh, the terms that result from those a little ugly. Okay, so uh, let me just uh, put down what we are going to get. The, one of them is in the form. There are two here which I forget. Okay, because they are the square of the wave function. All right, uh, so if I have an, an integral, say going from, uh, this is R2 squared. Okay, let's look at this one. So if I have an integral which goes from, say some A to infinity, uh, e to the minus alpha r with a factor of r over here and dr, 
Okay, how do I determine that? Well, the simplest thing is to uh, look at minus del, del alpha of a to infinity e to the minus alpha r dr. So that's going to be minus del del alpha of, okay, e to the minus alpha r. So everything will be divided by alpha. And because of the minus sign, I'm going to put the, uh, okay, well, one minus from differentiation, one minus from that. So the upper sign is going to give me zero, right? So it's going to give me e to the minus alpha a. So you differentiate that with respect to uh, alpha, and that's what you get for the uh, second uh, integral. Okay, so what is that? Let me just strike that down. Okay, so that second integral, which we calculated first, uh, alpha is equal to uh, 2 over a. So, uh, well, one more derivative with respect to alpha. You see, this is going to give another ugly, even uglier result. And then we still have to integrate them over R1, okay? So this is a good place to say dot, dot, dot. And look up and trust Griffiths uh, about what the result is going to be. Okay, and it turns out to be, let me just, Fine. Okay, minus five over four, minus five over four times z times e one. Okay, so let's call it something like v electron electron. Well, we call it h one, right? Well, let's let's just call it v. Uh, so this is v e due, due to the using the helium wave function, and z is equal to uh, 2. So uh, for helium, this turns out into minus 5 over 2 uh, E1, the ground state energy. Okay, so now we calculate that, and so this is also our first order, okay? So this is our first order uh, energy change in helium. And if we add the two, okay, so if we just take uh, E0 uh, uh, for helium, uh, which was 109 electron volts, uh, plus this E helium to first order is going to be something which is actually quite good. Uh, so it turns out to be, let me see if I can find my result here. have it someplace. Well, we can always cal calculate it. Who has a calculator? Okay, very good. What do we get? Minus yeah. Okay, very good. Minus 75. 0.8 electron volts. Okay, so 74.8, okay. I was trying to make it better, but okay. So uh, the experimental again is uh, equal to minus 79 electron volts. So we are still off something like uh, four electron volts. Okay. Uh, so how are we doing on time? 
All right, so uh, what we are going to do is now try to solve this same problem uh, using the variational method. Uh, so maybe I'll start over here again. Uh, <coughs> okay, the idea in the uh, variational method that we are going to use is to put a trial wave function, okay, a variational uh, wave function, which still looks very hydrogenic, but it's not going to, uh, it's not going, it's, it's, it's going to have a slightly different structure. You see, I have this, uh, the two protons, and then all, I have these two electrons which are flying around. Now, the idea uh, with this variational uh, wave function is that the electron here uh, doesn't really see the full uh, protonic charge, uh, but sees some effective uh, charge for the proton, okay? Uh, so this goes for both electrons, obviously. Uh, each one shields the proton a little bit uh, for the other electron. Okay, so the idea is, can we use this fact to put in a trial wave function, which is going to be uh, the wave function for a uh, hydrogen atom, actually, okay, with charge ZE instead of 2E, okay? So <laughs> what we are going to do is we are going to assume that there is this psi, uh, let's call it variational. Uh, it, it will be a function of obviously R1 and R2 again, but it will be have the product form. Okay, I, unfortunately I erased my wave function, but it looked something like this. Uh, two uh, or a cubed, right? No, eight to three half. Uh, yeah, two, eight to the three over two. Now, we have to be careful, we are putting in, let me just put small subscripts here, A uh, for an amount charge Z uh, for the, uh, for the Bohr radius. And then I have E to the minus R1, uh, uh, divided by a sub z, and then the uh, angular factor on our root 4 pi, okay? Times the wave function for the other one, okay? So this is again going to be a z minus three over two, e to the minus r two or a z, okay? And one over root four pi. Okay, so it's a symmetric wave function, okay, in R1 and R2. Each one feels a uh, charge Z, so that's the wave function. So how do I implement the variational uh, calculation? I calculate an E variational, okay, which is going to be uh, this psi variational star times my Hamiltonian, uh, psi, variational and integrate over all, all coordinates. So this H is my original H, okay? The, I don't make any changes in that. It's just that uh, original uh, object. Okay, so what I find out, uh, okay, so let, let's just write this down. This is going to be, uh, let me write like this, psi, variational inner product with our H. The H I erased, but there's a kinetic energy term. So let me just put K for the first particle plus K for the second particle. 
and then I have the potential energy term, which is going to be, okay, 2 e squared, okay, not z e squared because I'm using the correct Hamiltonian, uh, over 4 pi epsilon 0 r1, potential energy of the second charge, minus 2 e squared 4 pi epsilon 0 r2, and then I have the electron-electron interaction, which is going to be e squared, okay, between the two electrons, 4 pi epsilon 0, okay, r1 minus r2. And psi there. Right, so this, uh, now we have to find out what these things are. Okay, I start making a table of some stuff here, but uh, let's uh, also, let's, let's enrich that a little bit. Now, what we are doing here is we are using this uh, psi variational to find expectation values, okay, of various quantities. Now, let's just remember, uh, so, remember that for the original hydrogen atom, okay? So, for the hydrogen atom, uh, I, when I looked at the expectation value of the potential energy, okay? For the hydrogen atom, remember what that was, okay? So, this is the expectation value of... Uh, minus e over 4 pi uh, epsilon minus e squared 4 pi epsilon 0 uh, r, right? So that was, remember, for the ground state, okay, so I'm looking at it for the ground state. Uh, what was that, you remember? The expectation value of the potential energy for any state? Okay, it was 2e1 actually, right? 2, because it's negative. Okay, so that's equal to 2e1. So I'm going to need this also. So this is for uh, when I take the expectation value with respect to a uh, wave function uh, which involves uh, Okay, uh, just just ordinary charge. Now uh, I know that if I put in, well, okay, let's just move on. Uh, what happens? Okay, what about the kinetic energy? So the expectation value of the kinetic energy for the hydrogen case <coughs> was the expectation value of minus h bar squared over 2m, okay, del squared operator, and this was equal to minus e1, right? So that when I add them up, I am going to get uh, just one e1. All right, now I am, I'll try to find out what these things are when I am uh, putting in, finding expectation value with respect to a wave function which is associated with z, okay? So what happens to this thing when I use an expectation value, okay, for the uh, so perhaps let's squeeze in over here. What happens to the expectation value minus h bar squared or 2m del if I use a wave function which instead of having a single electron, instead of having an e squared, <coughs> has z times e squared. So E 
e squared goes to z times e squared. So the energy becomes z squared times larger. Okay, so that means this has to become z squared larger, right? So this is going to be equal to minus z squared e1. Okay, similarly, if I am looking for the expectation value of everything, all, all e squared is going to z e squared. So if I have minus z e squared, okay, 4 pi epsilon 0 r expectation value with respect to z, that's the potential energy, right? That should also go by a factor, grow by a factor z squared, right? So this is going to be 2 z squared e1 again. You can see where the factors are coming from. One factor of z comes from this z. Another factor of z comes from expectation value of 1 over r, right? Because expectation value of 1 over r is actually just uh, 1 over the uh, Bohr radius, and Bohr radius goes like a over z. Okay, so that's why I get those two factors. So that means, okay, I, I'm going to need uh, terms which look like that. Okay, so let me put that down. So what happens if I look at the expectation value of minus 2 e squared over 4 pi epsilon 0 r with respect to something with wave functions with z? What, 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 what's the average of that? We should be, you should be able to see that immediately. For e1? Well, we have the z disappears and becomes 2 here, but there's just one factor. Right? Yes, okay, I have to divide this by 2 by z and multiply by 2. So it's going to be 4z e1. Okay, so we are almost done. Uh, we need this electron-electron interaction, but for that we already know the result. Okay, so that's given all the way over here. I have that quantity. All right, so all that remains is now put all of that stuff into my equation. Okay, so the first term here is going to give me, okay, uh, let's see. Z squared Okay, not only that, we have one more uh, thing that we have to worry about, right? This, the E1 that we have is for a single electron. Uh, but I think I can, I do have two factors here. There's a del squared here, right? Uh, okay, so am I doing this correctly? Uh, hmm? And they're also for single electron? Yeah, okay, so those are for single electron uh, with Z Okay, I guess you're okay. Okay, so minus z squared, so everything is proportional to e1. Okay, uh, there's going to be a uh, minus z, minus z squared for this one, minus z squared for that one. 
Okay, so those, those are the positive kinetic energy terms. And then I have uh, plus plus 4z e1 for this one. 4z e1 for that one. And plus 4z e1 for that one. And this one is minus, because this is repulsive, minus 5 over 4z times e1. Okay, so that wasn't that bad, okay, because assuming that we know what that result is. All right, uh, so let's just group terms here. This is going to be equal to minus 2z squared uh, plus uh, 8 minus 5 over 4. What's 8 minus 5 over 4? 8 minus 5 over 4 is 32, so 27 minus 4, right? 27 over 4. Uh, Z. E. Okay, so what we need to do is we find the optimum of this. If we find the uh, we just find the minimum of this, extremum of this, and just see what happens. Okay, uh, this approximately break time, but what I'll do is I'll keep you through the break. Let's finish this and I'll discuss something small and then we'll not have the second hour because we have more or less come to the end of the chapter. So let's just go on a little bit more. Uh, okay, so let's see how this optimizes. a little worried about that 2z squared term. Let me just check whether I'm doing everything okay. Wonderful, everything is okay. Uh, yes. Downwards parabola? Uh, yes, but E1 is negative, right? Okay, so we're okay. All right, so this then tells us uh, that minus 4z uh, plus 27 over 4 uh, is equal to 0 and z is equal to 27 over 16 and by sheer luck this is actually 3 over 2 to the fourth power, right? Okay, so, uh, and if you just divide this to that, obviously you get a number. Isn't hmm? to the fourth power? Excuse me? Third power is 27. Yeah. So it's not 3 or 2, fourth power. Oh. Uh, three, 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 three. Yeah, you are right. You are right, but I sort of remember. Two, four, you are right. Why did I write that? Let me just erase it. In any case, let's remove that. So 27 over 16, which is the amount of charge this other electron goal sees, is going to be, uh, let me just see, I think it's 1.67 or something. Anyone with a calculator is very good. 1.6, I think. Yes, 1.6. Okay, thank you. 
So 1.7. So this is the effective charge that the uh, that an electron sees reduced due to the presence of the other electron. Okay, so uh, it's interesting that we get something like 1.7. Uh, now we have to put this in, okay, into this uh, object. Okay, so E variation that has been found. So let's put a star on it or something. Uh, our uh, result is going to be minus 2 times 27 or 16 uh, squared uh, plus 27 over 4. Uh, times uh, 27 or 16, okay, E1. Uh, so I do have the result for this someplace. Okay, so it turns out that this is actually 1 over 2, 3 over 2 to the fourth power, or whatever it's worth. No, to the sixth power, in fact. Amazing. Uh, E1. And this is equal to now minus 77.5 electron volts. Okay, so again, the experimental, now we are really close. Experimental is uh, minus 79 electron volts. So we are only 1.5 electron volts uh, from... That, so it's approximately two percent mistake. So yes. Which one? This equation? Uh, no. This one. So we had found. So this one plus 8e1 minus 5 over 4z e1. If we put the z value to this equation, it gives minus 8. Uh, okay, so what you are saying is that the this this term here, so you are putting the z into this term. Is there a mistake? I, I don't think we... No, no, no. The first one, when we found minus 74.8 electron volts. Okay. So in that one, we put z equals 2, but if we put z equals 27 over 16... Okay, now that's a different problem. Okay, so let's discuss that. In fact, that's important. Now, when we calculate, okay, something like this, when we calculate, for example, VEE and go through this algebra, we are we have a model Hamiltonian with a certain value of z. Okay, so we have in uh, this Hamiltonian, for example, z is equal to two. Also, when we are solving the problem uh, using uh, the variational method. Again, our Z is fixed, okay? So this is the Z associated with the Hamiltonian. We are not allowed to change that, okay? So the Hamiltonian has its certain uh, charge value which comes from the structure of the problem. So that is fixed, we are not allowed to do that. Now, in the case when we solve for this VEE, that in that case we solved for the uh, energy, okay, using this charge being equal to two oh, at at all times, okay. Uh, now this z here, and we have calculated it over here, has to be equal to two, okay. But over here now we are modifying it. So that the wave function itself is modified. So Hamiltonian still is the same. The z that we are changing is only in the variational function. So in the variational function, we are free to make 
any assumptions, okay, any sort of uh, approximations, changes, etc. So we are free to use a z here in the variational wave function, but we are not allowed to change the z in the Hamiltonian. Okay, so z in the Hamiltonian is the same. Okay, so what have we accomplished? We have uh, just uh, found a uh, result we can apply it to several things. Uh, one thing that you can apply it to is the H minus ion. Okay, so you can just use these results. You have to adjust Z, etc. properly to adjust the energies, but if you look at the H minus ion, uh, the H minus ion, if you have a single energy state, is minus 13.6 electron volts, right? So H minus ion is you have one proton, but then <coughs> two electrons around it. Okay? So you may want to know if this is stable, if this will actually exist. So the uh, lowest energy level is going to be 2 times minus 13.6 electron volts, which is what, 27 minus 27.2 electron volts, right? Okay, so this is the case without the electron-electron interaction. Now, on top of that, you can add the electron-electron interaction. Now, the critical point here is that there's this state minus 13.6 electron volts, this corresponds to the case when you have a single electron, okay, so this is the hydrogen atom, and the other electron is free to move around. So this has energy zero, this has energy minus 13.6 electron volts. So this is the dissociated state, if you like, of the H minus ion. Now, <coughs> If, when you add the electron-electron interaction, it puts your energy above the minus 13, 16, 13.6 electron volts, then that will be unstable because the system will uh, fall into this state. But if it's below, then it will be stable. Okay, so <clears throat> when we add this VEE, it actually turns out extremely close to this expect radio VE, which we found over there. So if it is on this side, if it's below that, then it's stable. If it's over here, it's unstable. It turns out that if you do the uh, variational calculation, as we did, it gives you an unstable result. But if you use an even better variational function, a, bit, a more accurate result, it turns out to be stable. Okay, so uh, this is a very close case uh, in which uh, the, this is just very marginally stable. Okay, <coughs> and uh, one last thing I want to discuss is the uh, H2 plus, okay, ion or molecule. Uh, so this is the case when you have two protons, okay, so two hydrogen-like atoms, okay, uh, but it has lost an electron, so you have just one electron moving around. Now, since the protons are much heavier, okay, and when we are solving the hydrogen atom, we assume that they are not moving. So we do the same thing here. We don't put assign any mechanics to these protons. We say, okay, these protons are a distance r apart. Okay, and we calculate the energy for this system. Now the energy for this system is very difficult to do anything directly analytically, but you can use uh, variational approximation very easily. Okay, so. What you do is, okay, the, the details are in your textbook, but you can sort of 
see what is going on. So now you have these two uh, vectors, R1 and R2. Okay. Uh, and the, you have the motion of the electron, which is with respect to R1. So the Hamiltonian is equal to minus h bar squared over 2m, okay, del squared with respect to the first coordinate. <coughs> and then you have the uh, energies, which are going to be attractive, minus e over 4 pi epsilon 0 r1, minus e 4 pi epsilon 0 r2. But then there is some constant term also because of the potential energy due to the two protons. Okay, these are E squared plus E squared or 4 pi epsilon 0 R. All right, so this is really just a constant in the problem. Okay, but it is also hidden inside R2. Okay, because R2 is just, okay, so R2 is really R1 uh, minus R, right? Okay, so you have an R in, in, in inside the R2 also. So you choose a variational function. The simplest variational function is, okay, so psi variational, is the hydrogen wave function again, 0, 0, function of R1, phi, 1, 0, 0, with respect to R2. So you say, okay, it's like the, it's a linear combination, oops, it's plus, I'm sorry. It's a linear combination of two wave functions. One is centered like the hydrogen atom around one object, the other one is centered around the second one, as if it's a hydrogen atom, and then from that obtain an E, which will be a function of R. Okay, so this is your, it's going to be your variational wave function, and what it turns out is actually very sensible. This energy as a function of R looks something like this. Okay, so it has a minimum. And that corresponds to the okay, inter-nuclear distance in the hydrogen atom. And reasonably successful okay, description of the uh, hydrogen molecule ion. Okay, uh, I'll stop here and let you go. So we meet... Uh, after the holiday on Tuesday.